Wednesdays, a road pod, early morning road pod. After a late night. After a very late. <laughs> we may not sleep that night. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> last time we did that, it was... I listened back to it like a couple weeks later, and oh, I was boy. like, wow, <laughs> this was chaotic. Oh, boy. I'm uh, interested in 48 hours from now. Yeah. Yeah. It should be... Uh, should be a good time. That's going to be an 8.30 pot. So just to give you guys a, a, an idea of our schedule, tomorrow we're going live at 12.30 Mountain Time. And then Wednesday we're going live at 8.30 in the morning Mountain Time or very late night, Tuesday night, depending on how you look at it. And yep. then uh, Thursday and Friday we're back here, normal noon pod. Sounds that great. one might actually be the toughest. Thursday? Yeah. Like after like all the chaos, all like the early morning – and then you have the flight back, and it's fairly late. That, I think Thursday is my upset call for toughest pod. Nope. Yeah, I think Wednesday is going <laughs> to really? be the tough one. I have some news for you. The bars in Indianapolis don't shut down until 4 a.m. Yeah. And they're popping until then. Yeah. That doesn't sound <laughs> legal. I know. I honestly, like, I have a love-hate relationship. It's probably... 60 40 hate <laughs> oh it's more than that hate for me <laughs> and this is going to be henry's first time out at the combine first time in indianapolis whoopee indianapolis underrated it's good uh, for two or three nights yeah yeah i mean yeah. I'm, I'm trying to move there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, also, I have very low expectations it's supposed to be 60 degrees tomorrow it's nicer there than here that's never happened it's like it's like a twenty minute walk from our Airbnb to the convention center. I was like, "There's no way anyone's gonna want to walk. It's gonna be windy and freezing." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, maybe we'll walk." Not too bad. Yeah. So. And tomorrow morning we talk to George Payton and Sean Payton. So gonna have a big show tomorrow. Yes, super exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully get some guests on as well and uh, see what happens. See what happens. But one thing we don't need to wait and see the coaching staff, guys. It happened. Wait, the coaching staff we also is set. Don't need to wait to tell everyone we are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. It's oh, very true. Yes. It's very Definitely true. Definitely don't have to wait. Yes. For that. Uh, get over to DraftKings Sportsbook. Bet on Nikola Jokic. Win money. Win money. It took a month, but the coaching staff is set. There's no worries. You're, Sean Payton's not going to have to jump on Twitter mm -hmm. and troll anyone anymore. Coaching staff is official. And this morning, the Broncos made their last official hire. So they have all their coordinators. They've capped off their position coaches by hiring Lou Ayeni, running hey, backs coach. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> running backs coach from Northwestern, has coached running backs for nearly 15 years. Now he's joining the Broncos. We know every position, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, I have to say the Joe Lombardi situation was handled incorrectly. Oh. Um, if you if they would have just come out originally and said this is the offensive coordinator, I'd be like, all right, yeah, that made sense. We knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. If, if they knew though, like like there's a chance that they did try to like, oh, Greg <laughs> Roman, please, 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 and then he shut him down. Like, okay, I think that they did. That's just weird. Don't let the information get out. Especially since, according to Sean Payton, they had so many. They had t more than ten guys that we didn't know about hired on Wednesday we didn't know about. Yet Thursday, they all come out. I agree. Why, why couldn't they just hold that Joe Lombardi news for a day? Or, uh, well, you couldn't really name him the OC and then demote him. So uh, th I, I agree. You could have just said the, <laughs> infor the, the information was wrong. Is that what they should have right. done for every, every guy? It's like, oh, here comes a Yenny. He's the offensive coordinator. And then the next day, Broncos found somebody better. <laughs> He's demoted to running back <laughs> right, coach right, just for right. every single player. <laughs> They got their top choice at OC, yep. and then they also got their second <laughs> choice at OC to be their running uh, back coach. For every single position. Mm -hmm. What staff did that happen with? There was one staff that there was something like that. Like, actually, the quarterback's coach was their second choice to be OC. Mm. Was that the Mike Shula, Pat Shermer? Maybe? Oh, with the Broncos staff. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. That would make sense, yeah. Or the Bill Musgrave... Uh, God, who was that guy? Mike McCoy? Could have could have been. Mm. You see Billy Moose is back? Yes. In the yeah. NFL. Yes. Um, big fan of his. If it wasn't for his inept offense at Cal last year, the Buffs would have gone winless. Wow. Big fan. And also one of the greatest quotes in Broncos history. Definitely. Yeah. 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 You want to say it? Um, yeah. Well, Earmuffs. you kind of have to set the scene. Um, so what, what? it was about running the ball, yeah. right? Or something. And, and he was being pressed by Jeff Legwald about... 
Was it a formation or no, was it just it was about just commitment like, to the run? It's like, do you, you guys are running the ball really well. Like, do you think you should do it more? And he's like, yes. And then they, he was like, actually, in fact, you guys are uh, <laughs> running the ball for five yards per carry on first and second down, yet you're only doing it like 28th in the league and just like kept going. Yeah, and he just yeah, goes, yes, yeah. we should run the ball. I second the motion. I second the fucking motion. <laughs> <laughs> it was too good. <laughs> so great. Just poking oh. a guy on the podium so much that he comes out and drops the F-bomb. Also, a Colorado kid who played for the Broncos. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very very cool. So I am a big fan of it. Yeah. His son's in the draft this year, too. Really? He's good. Yeah, tight end. Tight end. He's massive. Have, does it, is that Kolar kid also Bill Kolar's son? Oh. Really? Grants? I mean, I mean, it's, I'd, yeah. I'd be very surprised if it's his son. Charlie Kolar? It could be his son. He could have been like 40 when he had him. Because what? I mean, Kolar's... <laughs> we, I'm not doing math. Today. I had a pretty <laughs> late night. Wow. We're doing the Nuggets. Oh, the yeah. Nuggets. The Nuggets. The Adrenaline. Yeah, uh, that was a. This isn't a Nuggets podcast. When a late game goes into overtime, I'm in on talking that. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, oh, the decision, the... like I didn't even consider booing Bones, and then everybody started booing when he checked in. I was like, oh no! I had like three seconds to decide, and I was like, I think I want to boo Bones. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely the a prisoner DNVR of the moment guy. When, it, when it comes to formally <laughs> when it comes to those things. Like, I just want to I just want to be a part of everyone doing. <laughs> this. I think it's why I fell in love with English soccer so much. You know, mm, wow. it's like everyone's singing. Don't want to miss good, out. Yeah, uh, it did feel weird rooting against Bones. It, yeah, but he had this look on his face that made it easier to root against him. How about Jamal <laughs> getting after him? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, anyways, crazy game. Probably shouldn't have been so close. Oh, it definitely should. But what, what I was needed it, uh... to go to OT for me to get Jokic's 10th assist yeah. so I could get my wow. Nuggets win, Jokic over 21 and a half points, triple-double parlay. We talk oh. about it We talk about it every game. Uh, yeah. we, we just say, what What was the Jokic uh, triple-double plus the Nuggets win? Was it plus 260? Uh, Probably no a less, little. No. This one, it was only plus 200 with the over yeah. 21 and a half. Points. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that is absurd. But then, you know, you make like a good chunk of money on it. And I'm just like, I feel like that was stealing. Not enough? Like, I no, I just mean like, I, of course that was going to happen. Right. Yep. Especially yeah. in an overtime game. And like ESPN, 8 o'clock, yep. Clippers. Wow. Yep. It's incredible. It's great. All right. Um, this coaching staff, incredible? Question mark? No. No, okay. Well, nope. <laughs> and we, we obviously gave out grades on Friday for how we view the coaching staff. I love the responses that we always get are like, you can't grade it until they've done something. I'm like, all right, so you just want us to do a, <laughs> an hour podcast and all this content. We're just like, yep, they hired some people. Could be good, could be bad. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, and, and that's the same for free agency. That's the same for draft coverage. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. They drafted seven guys. We'll see. See yeah. you guys later. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in 10 years, like, all these young guys are head coaches, and we look back and say, like, oh, my goodness. Can you believe all these guys were in Denver? Or it yeah, could like just be. Like, I wonder if that, that Washington staff, yeah. like Mike Shanahan, oh, uh, yeah. Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan. Oh, nepotism. What are they thinking? <laughs> yeah. No, Those are all his friends. No experience. Matt LaFleur. <laughs> exactly. Like, Actually, we would have we loved that staff. Because that, that was okay. Mike Shanahan's staff, an older guy. Obviously, maybe you give yeah. him some crap for, for having Kyle on the staff. Uh, but, but then, so many young guys. And that's why I advocate for young guys is a lot of these young guys get in <laughs> and they can rise and become those guys. That's why I love yeah. that they have Davis Webb in the building. Why they have some other young guys coupled with some older guys, too. The thing is, Washington almost... Almost said their former name because that's what they were. Can't. The Washington back in the day when they had Sean McVay, like they they don't really get anything from him being a great head coach now. Like he was probably a pretty good assistant at the time, but that just like yeah, eh, con congrats. Credit. It's yeah. cool looking back now. You get yeah. some you get some cool graphics made after exactly. The fact. Yeah, yeah that was show probably up. the combine. Uh, oh. All stars. Right there. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. would have been. <laughs> Those oh, guys wow. are not sleeping. Oh, no. That's actually Oof. the most impressive part. It's like, we'll be whining on Wednesday morning yep. that we got, like, four hours of sleep or mm -hmm. whatever. The coaches stay out till four, and then, like, they have to be at some workout at 5.30. I just couldn't. The first time that I heard that, I'm like, you're working out in three hours from now? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. The thing is, though, they all have, like, if you're 40 
then probably for the past 20 years, you just had an insane schedule because you like start out as like a grad it's true. assistant. It's true. And it's like, oh, you're sleeping in the office and you're working till nine and you're starting up at 430 when the coach gets in. And so you have like the five miserable years at the start and then you still keep grinding. Like that's just the world that they live in. It's a good, you really it's can good just like be built different at a certain point. Like, mm-hmm. like Spencer, who now works <sighs> full time here, w- was working at the golf course at, at Spring Valley. And like he would have to be there at like 530. But I wouldn't know that until like 230 when he's like, all right, I should probably head home. I got to be the course. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so, you know what I think of this coaching staff? Every single coach that joined this staff, they're absolutely out of their mind crazy because they're signing up for no life. They're signing up for life to be football. Really quick yeah. on Davis Webb. Did the Broncos officially announce that yet? Uh, they have not officially announced it. They are just working out the contract, which may be more so of he's like, I could have made a couple million staying in the NFL as a backup. Mm-hmm. You told me you'd hook me up. I'm speculating here. So yep. let's make sure that I'm getting paid more doing this job than I am as a player because I'm also going to work more. Maybe he's like, negotiating a trip to the combine he's like i want to hang out with the boys. <laughs> uh does he does he have boys there because us. they're they're oh yeah. us yes of course yeah. that's a good point uh he would technically be our boy well you and i's boy because he's younger than us that is yeah that's yeah. true you could call him father henry i could i will yeah. i will <laughs> father davis <laughs> <laughs> he'll spin you in his web yeah actually i had a a person who i worked with in the past just like out of the blue send me davis's phone number a couple days ago, I was wow. like, hey, I, if, if you want this, like, just, I'm not sure if it still works, but feel free to try it. And I was like, mm, do I really want to just cold call him the day <laughs> the news breaks? Like, let's see if we run into him first. What yeah. if you just call him right now? Speakerphone. Hey, uh, David. <laughs> you're on the GMDR Broncos podcast. What's going on? What's this contract? Hey, Father David. <laughs> Davis. <laughs> oh, man. That would be a way oh. to welcome him to town. That's for sure. I yep. hope that if he has a daughter, he names her Charlotte. Charlotte's <laughs> Web. Wow. <laughs> you can be like Charlotte S. Web. That actually wow. kind of slaps. It, it kind of does. I would. It, <sighs> sad movie, though. Um. Right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't really remember. It's been <laughs> probably was, 25 yeah. years. Exactly. This is the second it was, time in the last 12 hours that Charlotte's Web has been referenced on a DNVR podcast. That's freaking that weird. That is wild. Yeah, that is they weird. were talking about it on the DNVR Nuggets post game last night. Uh, do they know more about it, it, it. Than, than we do? Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. It's about a spider, right? I do believe that's true. Uh, maybe I've never seen the movie then because I hate spiders so much. I think Pig is yeah. like second lead. Pig, oh. spider. I think there's a duck. Sounds about right. Yeah. It's a, mostly just farm animals. Yeah. One human, right? Sure. That was actually what they were debating last <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, humans? Because Eric said there's no humans in it. Oh, I think I'm thinking Ooh. of Babe. Babe yeah, is yeah. a yeah. sick movie. <laughs> That's the exact same thing we were going through last that night. That is it a great movie. started with the quote, that'll do pig. Any uh, movie like, where I the think animals that's from talk. Babe, and then someone else is like, I think that's from Charlotte's Web. <laughs> we I, went, I would guess Babe. I think it's We babe. went on a cruise, and I would have been like sixth grade or something. And and so it's like family and all that. But the thing is, like, you kind of you have that like little room or whatever. I watched, uh, oh, what is that? It's the one with the guy who played Sean Payton, except he's running a zoo. Kevin James. Yeah. Kevin James yeah. has his night a, at the zoo. You think of night at the zoo? Is it just the zookeeper? That sounds right. The point the is sequel, night at the zoo museum. Ah, <laughs> that would actually be sick. But the point is, he can talk to all the animals. Mm. And and so I was like, this is awesome. I. Was, like, imagine just thinking it's about what an animal would say all the time. Zoo? That's a different one. Okay. I actually still haven't seen that. But it's it was incredible. And so I remember that trip. I was just like, got ice cream and just watched that movie over and over again because it was one of like three movies they had. It's wow. so weird when you talk about things from your childhood. And I'm like, I think I was in college when that <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Um, also, Davis Webb made 945 grand last year. Uh, shouldn't be that hard to top. Although, yep. position coach... Probably typically not getting into that territory True. that often. Definitely. But he has leverage because last year, team tried to make him be, the Bills tried to hire him as a coach, mm-hmm. and he had the leverage of being a player. He has he had that leverage. He probably could have been a backup quarterback somewhere. I'm sure the Bills would have wanted him back. I'm sure the Giants would have wanted him back, so mm-hmm. I'm sure he did some have some leverage. Yeah. And it especially is- now with the Broncos' ownership, isn't it so easy to come in there and be like, 
yeah, you guys have this money, pay me. Right. And it's interesting because like we talk, I, I don't, we don't have to go through the, the Davis Webb like origin story again. But like we talk about Brett Rippon, it's like, oh, that guy's probably going to be a coach eventually. Yeah. But he doesn't have any like track record of doing anything <laughs> impressive in terms of his quarterbacks that he's working with right. doing well. That's a good point. It's like Brett Rippon where we're like, this guy has a future in coaching. And then every quarterback he works with turns out to be dope. Yeah. It's yeah. really true. Yeah. You shouldn't say works with. Every quarterback he plays with turns out to be dope. Yeah. Every quarterback yeah. he's touched. Also, the thing about with. Yeah. like should a coach sign up for that life? Imagine just being Cliff Kingsbury. Or it's like things aren't even going great for him right now, but that guy lives a pretty sick life. Yeah. Like that's it's you're kind of sure like playing the lottery a little bit, but it's worth throwing your hat in the ring. It does help to be <sighs> just incredibly attractive. That is true. That is very true. But that's everything. <laughs> that's uh, everywhere in life. That's a, a bonus. Yes, it is. Yeah, that would help. <laughs> you know what makes you more attractive? Money. Uh, money, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sometimes, yep, yep. Also, Breckenridge Brewery. Oh, you grab yourself a beer, probably yes. going to be looking a little more attractive. There's going to be some Breckenridge beers flowing, even in the great state of Indiana. Yes. There's going to be yeah, a lot okay. of Breck beers. The state of Indiana. The state, okay. The state of Indiana, there's going to be a, a lot of great beers from the great state of Colorado yes. there. How about that? That's okay. a great state. Uh, and this Avalanche Amber Ale six-pack that we have on the set, open. Someone's already drank one. Too good. They are irresistible. And it is, I mean, we talked about nuggets. How about those Colorado Avalanche? Mm. They are the hot. Yeah. And the, 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 they're not just hot. They're the team we expect. And yes. this is who they are. They are on a tear. And if you want to support them, be drinking some Avalanche Amber Ale, of course. I mean, they have a beer for all three of the big teams in Colorado. They got the Broncos country. They've got the Nuggets Mile High City. They got the Avalanche Amber Ale. So check them out. Yep. They're the official beer of DNVR. Go to breckbrew.com. Click on their beer locator to find all of the beer, Breckenridge beer, close to you. And that's all three pro teams that we have. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. That we, is true. Uh, there another one started oh, this weekend. Uh, Henry talks about how much he hates the Rockies, and then he course. was tweeting complaining that their very first spring training game wasn't on TV. It's twenty twenty freaking three. Almost every spring training game is on TV. Meanwhile, AT and T is broadcasting four Rockies games all spring. And again, it's because everybody hates them and nobody wants to watch, and they're terrible and yeah, and whatever else. It's part yeah. of the reason why they didn't show it. It's part of the spring though. Like it, spring training for the Rockies is it's better than the actual right season. You it's just Better. You just Here. said you just said nobody wants to watch it. You are upset that you couldn't watch it. Nobody you tried does tuning in, but you have to. It's just something you have to do. And so instead, I'm listening to the radio every day. I everybody's like, oh, baseball's incredible on the radio. How do you remember a single thing that's happened? How do you remember who's where and where the pitches are? I'm like nobody knows what's happening. All that stuff is just a lie. Henry, it you, needs to be shown. But you just said that in in a way to be attractive is by having money. If they mm -hmm. broadcast these games, they're going to lose money off them and then thus uh, become less attractive. No, AT&T's bankrupt anyway, so they already uh, lost their okay. money. Why well. not just do it anyway? <laughs> See, the, the thing is, it's just daytime sports. It's one o'clock sports every single day, and they last three hours. And so you can, like, that's your entire afternoon. You could just have it on the TV while you work or whatever. It's incredible. We're already way over the limit on baseball talk on this pod. Yeah. So, um, but I will say the one crazy thing that I learned when I covered a spring training game mm -hmm. is that the starters start the game. So, like, in this case, Nolan Arenado, when I was there, he starts the game. Then he comes out of the game in the fourth inning. Just goes home. <laughs> yeah, it's so wild. <laughs> just leaves. <laughs> yeah. Literally, they pull him, goes, takes a shower. Like the media goes into the locker room to talk to him before he goes home. Wow. And then he just leaves the stadium in like a six-six game in the seventh. That yeah. is. Uh, could you imagine if that was any other sport? <laughs> That's so weird. It's I mean, crazy they'd be being called bones. Obviously, you like to like support your guys, but. I don't know. I'm sure they're saying, like, you should just capitalize on your rest. We don't need sure. you here. Exactly. I think I would want to be out there, like, just cheering on my team. Yeah, until they're like, you can go home. And you're seems, like, okay, yeah. It just seems weird. A point. It, it seems very weird, yeah. It's All like, right. uh, I think, three of the eight, 16 games today are not on TV. With the Rockies it being one of them? No, matter. actually, this is one of the no, four they're on. Look at that. Because the A's are broadcasting. So it's not because the Rockies are doing of it. Course, of yeah. course. Of well, course. The A's know, probably shouldn't be broadcasting either. Uh, <sighs> that's very true. <laughs> you yeah. can't just punt on being a sports team, though. You can't just say, like, ah, uh, nobody wants to watch us. 
I guess that's just who we are now. Yes, yes, you can. Like you gotta like <laughs> feed the people who are interested. No, like getting people to watch anywhere. you is what it's all about. You know why you would go home? I just figured it out in the middle of a game. Why? Because you got Jive Hive delivering mm. weed to your house. Mm. They should just deliver it to the clubhouse. They should. Oh well, wow. that, that might be a little <laughs> bit uh, right to the dugout. iffy. Yeah, Based you might on, get in trouble. Yeah, I don't know anything about their policies, but if I were to guess that MLB would be the last like entity to allow people players to smoke weed. I don't know. They like quietly allowed steroids for a very long time. That, that is that true. Not made quietly, the players better. That is true. Honestly, a huge L when they took it away. So you think weed would do the opposite? I don't know actually. I had a I had some get them friends in high school who like to uh like to hit you know hit the car before they played their baseball games. Hit hit the car before yeah. hitting the ball. Yeah, yeah. Hit oh. the B before hitting the ball. Hit the J before <laughs> hitting the ball. So I heard a rumor recently We're that no more baseball talk after this. Oh, you're gonna love this then. <laughs> um, that UFC fighters sometimes when they train they'll take mushrooms, but oh. just not not like consistently I but occasionally because it's it, it like slows everything down. And so to them, like the like case for micro it, micro dosing. They're no, just dosing. <laughs> but a but lot. they'll do it because then they'll they'll do a fight because it feels like everything's slow motion, and so it's like a chance to like practice in slow motion. Wow. And I know, like, I think some notable fighters, a- at least, have tried training that way. Interesting. I've I tried mean, until they're. They I'm not. Miss I can't say how often they do it. Yeah. <laughs> a baseball uh, pitcher threw a no hitter on acid. I believe it. That is wild. Yep. Not that I've ever done acid. I wouldn't even know where to start or what it does, but that yeah, sounds like a don't, baseball pitcher. Don't, don't do acid, but do check out our friends over <laughs> yeah, at... Don't tell people what to do. Ja- okay. That is true. Oh, Ryan says you can do it if you want. I say probably not, but you can do <laughs> weed. That is legal, unlike <laughs> acid. We can talk about legal things and check out our friends over at Jive Hive. Not only is it convenient, they'll deliver it to where you are. Maybe you're just getting off the golf course and you're going home, you want it delivered. Maybe you're leaving your spring training game, you want it delivered. You can do that at Jive Hive. Check them out, J-I-V-E-H-Y-V-E dot com. <laughs> and it's gonna be cheaper too because they don't have any stores in person, which means that you save on that overhead. They'll bring it straight to you check them out they're serving aurora greenwood village monument fountain and various areas of el paso county check them out jivehive.com j-i-v-e-h-y-v-e.com that comment that i think is the same one we laughed at <laughs> call jason Plummer and ask him <laughs> oh For a my second, gosh like I, wow my brain like i said i was late night I'm, i was a little slow and so i was like something is off something is off something is off and i was like oh that's right it's jason jason the jason, jason. the snason <laughs> Which uh, the reigning Madden League Super Bowl champ is named Jason, and he has inherited the nickname <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> that should be the nickname for every Jason. Yeah. It really should be. Oh, yeah. we have a Jason that works here. We do. We need to call the Jason. Snason. Jason. He also played he quarterback, also quarterback in college. Yeah. <laughs> Jason the Snason. Let's go. That's perfect. Love a new nickname. I'm so excited. Just going to be like, hey, what's up, Snason? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Who would be the Snason on this Broncos coaching staff? There's no Jasons. <laughs> Anything close to that? Davis Navis. <laughs> Sean the Snason. Oh. oh. You can call okay. him that tomorrow when Hating we see him, Snason. Henry. Yeah. Hating the Snason? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're on to something. We're right? on to something. Okay. Of this Broncos coaching staff, we've already handed out our grades. Underwhelming was kind of the word that was used on uh on Friday for some uh, for some of the hires, kind of overall. Uh but who is the most important coach? On this staff, easy answer to me. Who? It's Vance Joseph. Uh, yeah. Um, well, Sean Payton doesn't count again, right? Uh, yes, correct. No Sean Payton because we'd all choose him, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. So no, no Sean. It's Vance Joseph. Um, he, I think the Broncos are going to have the offense to stay in games this year. Okay. Um, and they had the defense to stay in games last year, but I think several games are going to come down to getting a big stop at the end of the game. And the Broncos have had a sick, sick habit of messing up these situations. <laughs> yeah, not sick the, as in cool. No, yeah. no, like a disease. Yeah, uh, of messing up these situations over the last six years. And Vance Joseph was actually part of that. Yeah. One of those rounds, or two of those years, uh, where they could not get the big stop in the big moment. And and so. There's going to be some really, really tough tasks, and obviously you got four games 
against Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes. Um, I mean, to be honest, if you're going to compete for the division, you have to win at least two of them. You cannot, you're yeah. just not going to win them with your offense. Um, your offense is going to give you a chance to win them. You have to win them with your defense. And so I think Vance Joseph has a huge, huge task cut out for him. He does have a very talented group of players, but if he fails, the team's going down with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you agree, Henry? I think it has to be. Like, you could make the case for some of the other guys because of whatever else situations going on. Russell Wilson stunk last year, and that needs to change. But just like a numbers thing, where Vance Joseph controls like forty percent of the team, and then the other like the forty percent that's offense is like mostly Sean Payton. You give half of that to Joe Lombardi, it's like 40, 20, and maybe you need more on the offense, but it's not twice as much. Like, to me, it just... Vance's fingerprints are going to be on this team more than any any other assistant coaches on this staff. And and if this was a different situation and it was the offensive coordinator has as much power, then I would go with the offensive coordinator. Um, I could go with, like, the quarterback's coach with so many guys talking to Russell. It's split too many directions to say any of them. Is, is too important. Yeah, and I understand what you guys are saying, but no, I have to stay on the offensive side of the ball. And Henry, you did bring up a good point about why it's not Davis mm-hmm. Webb, why it's not Joe Lombardi, because Sean Payton's going to be calling plays. Joe Lombardi's kind of there in an assistant way. You could actually make the case for John Morton, the Broncos' pass game coordinator, but again, he's really going to be working with Davis mm-hmm. Webb, with Joe Lombardi, with Sean Payton. Those guys are all going to be huddled and, of course, led by Sean Payton. But I think one guy that's going to be more so on his own dealing with a position that's up in the air more than any position on the team is Zach Streif, the Broncos' offensive line coach. You could make a case that the Broncos will have four new starters on the offensive line. Likely probably not four, but potentially three. 60% of their offensive line is going Mm -hmm. to be new. And obviously, we know that Sean Payton's going to want to run the ball to take Russell Wilson off the uh, the high dive, as he said in his opening press conference. He wants to take pressure off of him uh, and make it so he's just doing easy things, not having to jump from the high dive Mm -hmm. and do complex things. So it's going to be uh, very scary. So not many times, no. Okay. Not okay. many, huh? No, 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 no. Oh. I, I never grew up around a high dive. First time I did, I, like, accidentally belly flopped. It was oh, really bad. that's awful. Like, I kind of just, like, jumped in the air and then panicked. Yep. I was, like, eight, probably, nine. And then I just somehow ended up belly flopping. Isn't that how most people jump off the high dive? Is they're ju- they're just freaking out when they do it, and then it no, turns everyone into else awful is very things. in control. And then oh, I well. got up there and I was like, "This is really high," and I just started flailing. Where do you find a high dive? It's only at like select pools. Yeah, yeah. I've legit never Mine seen one. Is that the Elks Club in Boulder? Wow. Huh. <laughs> like to me, like that's the kind of thing that just like in '90s movies. Yeah. It's just like, oh, they went there. Oh, no, the kid's scared to jump. You know, like, I've I've never actually seen that. I didn't think they actually existed, really. I think the last time I did it, my I went and then my friend was climbing up and fell off and broke his arm. Fell off the ladder? Like, fell off the ladder, (laughs) yeah, and broke his arm. So I think that was the last (sighs) time I've done a high dive. God, that's bad. Zach Streif has... His work cut out for him. He he certainly does, and not. It, I talk about how there could be four spots open. The one spot that probably is is going to stay the same. Uh, maybe the two spots: Garrett Bowles and Quinn Miners. Both of those guys can still have big time improvement. Mm-hmm. And with Quinn Miners, a new scheme, it's going to have to be working with him. It's not like mm-hmm. he's like ready to go. You don't have to work it, worry about him. So not only is it going to be filling a couple of holes, specifically, you got to imagine. I would think that one of those third-round picks is going to be on an offensive Mm -hmm. lineman. So he's working with a rookie, he's working with some new free agents, and then he's also helping Garrett Bowles come back and and not be uh, a holding Mm -hmm. issue uh, on the line and be a good left tackle. So, And it's going to be with the pass game and the run game. I just think that he has so much work in front of him, and it's going to be a key piece to this offense being bad to average, average to good. I think he's going to be a massive part of this, and he's never done it before. That's what I was going to say. He might have the lowest floor uh, of anyone, and he might also have the highest ceiling. I mean, it's hard to mm-hmm. judge ceilings of coaches. Yeah. It's already kind of silly to do it with players. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's, it concerns me. 
I'm highly concerned about it. And, you know, I was up in Boulder last week and we interviewed the Buffs offensive line coach. He has been coaching offensive line for this exact offensive system for the last six years. He's been in coaching for 32 years. And I was like, I feel very comfortable knowing that he knows how to teach yeah. exactly what they need these guys to do. And, you know, you can put on the film and see that, man, that's a well-coached group. I have no idea. Now, obviously, I'm going to trust Sean Payton when mm -hmm. Sean Payton has a guy in his room and says, this guy can absolutely teach it the way that mm -hmm. I need it to be taught. That, that calms me a little bit. Well, uh, This is a guy who's never taught anything to anyone, maybe, other than just his teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it, it, it concerns me a lot, but I, ha like, I have to fall back on Sean Payton Probably there's a reason he has a good feeling about this. Same same thing as Davis Webb. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. And I mean, he he got drafted as a seventh rounder, and this is like Sean Payton made it very clear that he loves him. Drafted as a seventh rounder in Sean Payton's first draft with yep. the Saints. First draft. Sean said like the guy's a genius. He works so hard. Like he's teaching everybody. He just gets it. Like all that sort of stuff. That's why he was a first team All Pro and played 11 years for the Saints and all that, goes into coaching, actually winds up being the color guy on the Saints radio broadcast, and apparently people liked him. I, I haven't done any scouting there, but <laughs> apparently people liked him. And then comes to Denver, and he just seems like... you you could He seems like an overachiever. He seems like a high achiever, a hard worker, all that sort of stuff. He and was then, also the assistant offensive line coach uh, yep. for a year or two. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I love it. That makes me feel better. There's something that I think might concern you even more than this, Ryan, and there's a very interesting trend in the way that Sean Payton hired his coaches. It's encouraging in one respect, and I think even more nerve-wracking in another respect. But first, I got to tell you about Ooh. our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Check them out. Guys, March Madness, couple weeks away. DraftKings Sportsbook is going to be the place to be for March Madness. And then you kind of almost roll right into NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. So many things going on at DraftKings Sportsbook. Even though you can't watch Rockies games, if you want to bet on them, you can, Henry. Maybe that's where you get your Rockies fix is at DraftKings. Yeah, instead maybe. Instead of the TV. That's, really quick. That might be a terrible idea. <laughs> I'm going to be telling everyone about this a lot over the next few weeks. Last year, I went into March Madness and just said I'm betting one unit on the underdog mm -hmm. in every single game. Oh. And it was far and away the most fun I've ever had watching March Madness. Was it yeah. also profitable? And it was significantly profitable. So you did it for every game or every, every game, game you Every game, regardless, blind. You hit the underdog and you bet the money line and you put one unit on it. Every, and uh, you do that for all 32 games in the first round? And then you do it every single round? Every single round. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I mean, that's smart because there's going to be a lot of juice there. Right. And then what was the team... Some team made it to the final four that shouldn't have, and so you just like rake, just raked in on them. Dang, that's a yep. great strategy. I'm, so I'm gonna fun. I'm gonna roll with you on that. Mm -hmm. Just you just got to make sure you're on top of it because yep. you, you might like accidentally forget a 15-2, right. and then they they're the ones who get the upset, and then you know yep. that it's and that's what makes you, you profitable. Yeah, yep, exactly. exactly. Oh, I, I love wonder that. If round robins might be the way to do that. Round robins are expensive. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so check out our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Use that promo code DNVR when you sign up. Make sure to see our show notes for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply and void in Ohio. And let's jump in and give our DraftKings mm. Sportsbook oh. pick of the week right now. I'm going with the hot team. That's the Colorado Avalanche. What are they like? 14, 2 and 2 in their last 18 games or something like that. Sounds they are on fire and it's not a fluke. This is who they are as I said at the beginning of the show. They are plus 600 to win it all right now. I think that's the second best odds. I think in a month this is going to be like plus 300 going into the playoffs they're going to be like plus 250 or something like that. So I think now is still a time to get value. We talk about it with Nuggets. The value is on them winning the whole thing. Jokic, you have no value in him and MVP anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm going Avs plus 600 to win it all. That's a good one. Uh, I'll just take the Nuggets. Um, I'll take the plus 800 to win the, yeah. the NBA. I actually mm. put a parlay on both those two things this morning. What did you get? 
Uh, ooh, that's a good question. Um, Nuggets and Avs both to win the championship. Yeah, nice. But basically, I wonder if you got as good a value as I got on both teams to win the Western Conference before the season. But they parlayed. Yeah. Oh, probably like fourteen fifty. Yeah, I had I had that same one too. But the 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 same game parlay insurance that DraftKings has, Sorry. where it's like, oh, you get ten dollars in a free bet if if you miss your thing. I've just been putting those on crazy combinations of things, and so that was today's. Or it's like okay, ten dollar free bet, throw it on there. It's like six eighty now if if it, if it hits. It's like that's awesome. So there's, I'll, I'll give that out. Just sixty eight to one odds. Plus eight hundred on the Nuggets to uh, to win. All right, so you can't get this now, but you're just gonna have to wait a day. Tomorrow, the Nuggets take on the Houston Rockets. Same Houston Rockets who gave up seventy one points to Dame last night. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nikola Jokic. Has 99 career triple doubles. Mm. The Nuggets are going to blow out the Rockets. Yep. That would make you think maybe he's not going to have time to right. get the triple yep. double. Yeah, it does make me think that. But he's going to get it. Before and you might half. get a little bit of value. And I think he might break his own personal record for fastest triple double he's ever gotten, oh. um, which was in the first half. Wow. Uh, so. I think we might get a little bit of juice on it because they think it might be a blowout that he won't play right. in the fourth quarter. Uh, and maybe it's going to be like, I'm going to guess plus 160. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> that is insane. And he's going to get in the first half. I oh, might even parlay that it. with some Alperin Sangoon stuff just because he he's like leaning into the baby Jokic thing. Yep. I feel like this, this is a big mm. game. Like maybe take his assist because he's going to have Jokic out there. He's also going to want to fling yep. it around. Yeah. I like it. I like yep. it a lot. So there's our DraftKings Sportsbook Pick of the Week. What else do we have? We have FOCO. Uh, if you need Broncos socks or Broncos cups. Sunglasses. Broncos sunglasses. Broncos blanket Broncos sweatshirt. blankets with arms. Uh, Broncos bobbleheads. Broncos cowboy hats. Broncos bikinis. Broncos Hawaiian shirts. Broncos, Crocs, Broncos. I think we get it. <laughs> yeah, basically anything with the Broncos, you can find at foco.com. And if you use the code DMVR, you get 10% off items that are not on sale. So uh, it's an awesome deal. There's a link in the description for YouTube, the description for the podcast. Click on that or just go to foco.com. Make sure you use the code DMVR. Okay, so I teased it before the break, but there's an interesting way that Sean Payton has built this staff. On the defensive side of the ball, every single coach that he hired has done this exact job before. Vance Joseph has been a defensive coordinator before, called plays. Marcus Dixon, obviously Christian Parker, were here last year in their same role, so they've obviously done the job before. Inside linebackers coach Greg Minuski has done his job, exact same thing before. In fact, he did it last year with the Minnesota Vikings. And Michael Wilhoit, while he only has four years of NFL experience, he's been as a coach, he's been a linebackers coach for two years in, in the NFL already. So they've experience on that side of the ball. On the offensive side of the ball, Pretty much no one has done the job that they're doing. With the exception, Joe Lombardi was an offensive coordinator last year, but he has net, and, and I was wrong about this last week. Last week I said Joe Lombardi was Sean Payton's offensive coordinator. No, he was his quarterback's coach, so, so I, I misstated mm -hmm. that. But Joe Lombardi has never been an offensive coordinator where he hasn't called plays. So that's kind of a little caveat there. Yeah. Not, not, not too worried about that. But Lou Ieni, the running back's coach, Never been a running backs coach in the NFL before. Davis Webb, obviously never been a quarterback's coach in the NFL before. Kerry Colbert has never been a wide receivers coach in the NFL before, only at the college level. Zach Streif, never been the offensive line coach, only an assistant offensive line coach. Declan Doyle, the tight ends coach, never been a position coach in the NFL before. Never been position coach, period, let alone the NFL. Uh, and there you go. There's your offensive staff. I guess there's one more person that the pass game coordinator, John Morton, has been a pass game coordinator. Uh, In one relation year. to Craig? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. He's been he's been that one year, 2006, Sean Payton's first year with the Saints. Obviously, something that can ease your concerns on this is Sean Payton. The most important position on the offensive side has done this before for nearly two decades, but everyone else under him very 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 new to what they're doing don't like it <laughs> gotta be honest don't like it um you know last year when 
when Nathaniel Hackett assembled his staff, <clears throat> we were kind of like, uh, okay, well, this kind of feels a little bit like he's just bringing in all of his friends to be on his staff. Right. But hey, if Russell Wilson's dope, it'll all work out. Right. Um, it didn't, obviously. And then you had like weird things happening, like the uh, interim coach coming in and firing assistants. <laughs> yeah. Like that doesn't happen normally. Um, so no. obviously Sean Payton is going to be more in control of what's yeah. going on than Nathaniel Hackett was. And that's just based on experience. But it does feel like he's calling his shot a little bit too much. It's like if you mm. went into a fantasy draft with someone and every round they're like, this is my sleeper. And you're like, bro, it's the first round. And <laughs> like every player is on the board. You right. don't need to pick Jerry Judy because you think he's about to have a career season. <laughs> right. That's what it feels like Sean Payton is doing on the offensive staff. He's just like, oh, watch this. And it's like, I would love that with Davis Webb. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. But every position everyone is like calling a shot and that that makes me especially nervous. when you're saying that in terms of like a, a fantasy round one fantasy draft round one and mike munchak is available maybe they did check in with munchak and he said no i'm retired but we haven't heard that that's the case he's in denver and it's like wait you have him uh, zach streif may be good but you know Mike yes. Munchak is the <laughs> truth. And then, you're right, you're not doing it at every position, but you're, you're allowing him to get his pick, pick and choose. So I think it's a really good part. point is you don't want this to be too much all on Sean Payton come week four, come week eight. You, you want it to be where he can lean on these other coaches. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, on the flip side, though, just because Nathaniel Hackett couldn't make it work doesn't mean that it's a bad plan. You know, like, like I think that Nathaniel Hackett, and, and that's not just to this specific situation, but, but anytime something comes up where you can just say, well, Nathaniel Hackett did it similarly, and we all saw how that panned out, the, it goes a lot deeper than that. Like, Nathaniel Hackett was a part of that problem. And, and the fact that he did things one way doesn't mean you just have to do the opposite this time. No. And if that doesn't work, then you do the opposite the next time. And, yeah, the, it, there's definitely, it's a bunch of new names, and... We all thought that he could bring in a bunch of guys who are experienced, but if you want an experienced wide receivers coach, then he probably just got fired. And if that was the case, then people would be saying, well, why'd you just hire this guy who got fired when you could have just gotten somebody who you think is going to be better than that? And, and I'm pretty sure when Azani was hired, he had only done it at the college level. He had, yep. yeah. Again, like, I, I'm not on the Zach Azani hype train, I think people liked him because he was on Twitter, but you look at all the receivers, it's like Jerry Judy's underperformed. Cortland Sutton was at his best a couple of years ago. Like KJ, that's injuries. I, d I don't look at a lot of what Zach Azani's done and say like, oh, look at all the development there. I was ready for, for new blood. Exactly. Position, for sure. But again, it just goes into the back to what I was saying, which I'm in on calling your shot. Like Nathaniel Hackett called his shot on uh, Jero Evero. Home run. Yep. But the problem is you called your shot on seven other positions oh, and the, right. the rest of them failed. <laughs> right. Um, so it it concerns me. Um, I think obviously there's going to just be a lot more organizational control and there's going to be less room for these people to <laughs> screw things up if they're not good at their yeah. job. But I would have just loved like Mike Munchak's coaching the offensive line. Davis Webb's coaching mm -hmm. the quarterback. It's like, ooh. Look at this dichotomy, mm -hmm. you know, right, like right. That's experience here and this, that. This is all just like, all right, well, hopefully you go like, what are we talking about? Seven coaches here on the office? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you go like at least five mm -hmm. of seven here. Right. And then Sean can make up those two duds yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. on his own. But good luck making up six duds of the seven or, of course, seven of seven. That would mm -hmm. probably be too tough. One where he didn't leave any room for failure i mean it's crazy to say that but you really didn't is special teams and that's mm -hmm. good because we don't want sean payton having to worry about all of the offense and then all mm -hmm. of the defense as well or all of special teams as well and he's not going to have to do that ben kotwika has done that before and then of course you have mike westhoff who's going to help oversee special teams and he did an interview recently and it really sounds like he's going to be the co-special teams coordinator which is great that's fantastic where was his interview um, it was some national one. I don't oh, okay. remember. Yeah. Right, cool. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I would want to hear him on a podcast. <laughs> well, that's the only place you're going to be able to hear him. I, from my understanding of, uh, talking to coaches this year. All right. Yeah. 
Sounds good. Yeah. Um, should we jump into some comments? Let's do it. We got a super chat coming in, I believe. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, just a, just a comment coming in from Corey H. He says, is there any signature defensive game in Vance Joseph's history? I mean, honestly, is there one? <sighs> not Broncos-wise. I mean, it's hard for me to remember. All the ones I remember are bad. Um, yep. Like... I'm sure there's a good one in there, but that's not what stuck out to me. Like what stuck out to mm-hmm. me was like getting carved by Matt Moore after Patrick Mahomes went down. Um, that's yeah. that's fresh in my mind. Um, one that comes to my mind from last year. It was one of probably the only games that the mm-hmm. Cardinals were on primetime television. It was near the end of the season, and they were playing Tom Brady and the Bucks. And they held, like, Tom Brady to six points or something entering the fourth quarter. And then Tom puts together a drive to tie Mm -hmm. it late in the fourth quarter and then puts together a drive to win it at the end of the game. I think they held Tom to, like, 18 points, which Tom Brady, 18 points, feels great, but... It's like what they added. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't a very good team. So that that was a good performance, I guess. And in Denver, they're just... Like, they just lost too much for there to be too many good games. Like, I mentioned the one against the Browns last week where it's the the fourth and one. They're at Cleveland six. They're down 17-13. And the obvious decision is you go for the touchdown because there's like three minutes left, four minutes left, and and the field goal doesn't help. He kicks the field goal and says, like, ah, we're going to get a chance to get back with the defense. And the defense did get the stop. Like, the defense had, like, a, a fourth down stuff and the Broncos offense got the ball back at their own 13. And so, like, if the offense would have been able to go get a field goal in the last two minutes, that could have been one because he, like, called the shot on the defense. Yeah. But in that one, the offense fell through. And so that's just kind of how I feel like it always worked is whatever he did didn't pan out in the end. I'm thinking back. So they started 3-1. and one. I believe week one they beat the Chargers yep. and Phillip Rivers. Um, mm-hmm. Of his first year? Yep. And that was one where they let him back into the game. Like I, they might have been. I think they were up like twenty-one to three, and then really? there were like turnovers. It came and s- down to a field goal at the end that hit off the post. Yes, it did. Um, I think that was Youngway Koo. It was. Ah. It was. Uh, Who week- Ben Kodwika has now turned when he was with the Falcons turned into a good kicker. Mm-hmm. Yes, week two. Very notable game. Is that the oh, the yeah. uh, Cowboys? Yeah, game? Yeah, certainly is. Trevor Simeon four tuds, baby. Wow. For Tugaliciouses. And then like a 98-yard pick six from Akib to leave yep. at the end of the game. That's against Tony Romo, too. Wow. Um, Only gave 40 yards to Zeke. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, wasn't it 14? Might have been. 40 total in the game. So probably. 40 total, yeah. So then week three. Mm, I think there was a very signature. No, maybe this wasn't this game. Uh, maybe a signature, signature loss. Special teams. Oh, this was the loss. Okay, of the first four. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. I don't remember it. Bills at Buffalo. Oh, was this Von that's Miller? the Von that's Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pull the hand yeah. back on Tyron <laughs> yep. Taylor. Twenty-six, sixteen. That one. Week four. Sucked. I can't remember. I feel like we're Mason you right here. I know. We're going through <laughs> everything. I'm happy I got one and two. That was impressive. Yeah. Um, the best Give me game. another part of week four, just like a little hint. Uh, you want a big hint or not? No, um, small hint. Uh, 26 total points scored in this game. Pretty forgettable. Oh. Pretty forgettable. <laughs> oh, man. It's like every game this past year. I don't year. remember, but it sounds like a signature defensive performance. Uh, it was. Only gave up 10 points in a 16-10 to 10 win against the Oakland Raiders. That's, mm, no, that's a different game. I, I don't that remember might be the EJ this one. Manual start. Mm, yeah, I don't remember at all. It might be. And then he throws a pick on the final drive to Justin Simmons. Mm. Maybe. That would be impressive if so. Vance Joseph's best game, defensive-wise, is head coach of the Denver Broncos. He gave up a total of zero points. Vance Joseph had a shutout as the head coach of the Broncos. Against the Titans? Bengals. No. no. Even worse team. Jets. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. It's week 14. You know who the quarterback was? All three of those teams in the last five years. <laughs> the, the starting quarterback threw for 46 yards. You know who it is? It was the Jets? Yeah. 46 yards. He actually got benched. Benched for Bryce Petty. Oh my or potentially God. got hurt. I would guess benched. Oh, it's the... 
Is that Christian Hackenberg? Uh, Josh McCown. Dang. Yeah, and then Bryce Petty came in. The Jets had 100 yards of offense that game. 100 yards of offense. Think about that. That's insane. Those names are terrible, too. Like, the Broncos' offense did not do that last year. Matt Forte. Remember when he was a Jet? That's crazy. No. Nope. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't either. Uh, we, got, we got one. Being a Jet certainly wasn't his forte. Oh, oh hey. Boy. We got one comment on the website from Nash. Bronco says, happy Monday, fellas. What position groups are you watching closely at the Combine this week? I've heard the corner and inside linebacker are fairly deep this year. What is so funny about the Combine is uh, <laughs> essentially we are going to the Combine, especially with the Broncos not having a first or second round pick. It would be different if, if they had a first or a second round pick. All the media in Denver, a lot of the media in Denver, fly out to Indianapolis tomorrow to talk to George Payton and Sean Payton, who, by the way, live in Denver, yeah. where we uh-huh. are coming Notably. from. So we all fly to Indianapolis to talk to them, and then we all fly back. Yeah. We fly back on Wednesday. Drills for the Combine start Thursday. Yeah. It, it's, Which is it's sad crazy. because they, this year, uh, like, opened it up. Yeah. Or I think last year they opened it up yeah. to where you can actually go watch some if you're media. Um, Which is also crazy that in the past they have not allowed media to yeah. watch those. So it, you literally weren't there this is how to NFL watch is players king. They, they used to just like they can get everyone to fly somewhere just for a press conference you know? <laughs> yeah, well exactly. even most of the important football people leave too because you can watch the drills on tv like they'll leave a couple scouts just to be like oh does this guy look big does this guy look small how like, do you interact with the guys on the side exactly yeah. but for the most part it's easier to watch on tv at this point anyway well and, and then a lot of them do stay because you get to have your meetings with them right there's that yeah right but yeah, for us, it's a it, this year maybe more than any other year. It's a little silly for us to be going, but <laughs> yeah. we'll we'll make the best of it. Oh, we're gonna make the best of it, and we're we're gonna have the inside information from talking to Sean, from talking to George. Remember, we have not talked to Sean Payton about Vance Joseph. We have not talked to him about his yep. coaching staff. We so we're gonna find out a lot tomorrow. Yeah, and honestly, like if you're someone who just loves the draft, like you're out, you're a Broncos fan, but you're also just really interested in in the draft and these prospects and what they have to say. I would honestly uh, turn you towards CHGO and PHNX this week. Yeah. Both have top five picks, uh, and so they're they're mm-hmm. going to be at every you know yep. big press conference with all the uh, the big players, um, trying to see who who they're going to pick. Yeah, it's very very true. What a different situation from both of those squads than I us. know. I it's know. wild. It couldn't be more important for them. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't. This is probably the least important draft the Broncos have ever had. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be unfair to put any importance on it. It's like they they probably need to get one starter out of it. And if that if they if that happens, then it was a it was a success. Oh, yes. Did they get any starters last year? Damari? Yep, okay. Dulcich? Kinda. Yeah. Like both I mean, were I like, guess combined they got one were, full year starter. But you yeah. didn't plan. Yeah, you didn't plan on them being starters. They, no. they had to become starters based on but injuries. If the Broncos are planning on any of their third rounders being starters, they're in for some trouble. What I'm saying though is like Guard. if they if they it's possible one, they'll compete. Then that's like a success. Definitely. Yeah, man, that's wild. Where those like the Bears are probably going into this draft saying like we should get three or four instant starters. Yeah, yeah especially with that pickup for sale. They, they might get, get many five. first round picks. Unless they trade Justin Fields and take Bryce Young. Oh, oh drama. Reset the rookie contract cycle. That would be such a bad idea. They would need a running back. Henry should know. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Henry should know as well as anyone that uh, drafting Bryce Young early doesn't work out. Wow, oh, that's damn. harsh. Madden shots fired. <laughs> the thing is, being shifty doesn't really matter, Matt. Like the pocket manipulation and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like it turns out. He just like is kind of a small guy with a not so great arm. Bryce? Yeah. In, in Madden. Madden. In Madden. Oh, in Madden. I was gonna say watch him. Yeah, you you do it in the NFL. He's like shaking and baking. Like he's there's guys like crash inside and he's like whirling around the outside. And <laughs> but that doesn't really matter, Matt. <laughs> Especially when you have a great offensive line. Should we shake and bake on out of here? Yes. Let's do it. We'll see you in Indy. All right. See you guys tomorrow from Indianapolis.